Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Greetings, my excellent friends. Greetings to you, my excellent friends. How's it going out there, chat room? It's, uh, what day is today? I know what day today is. Today is December 17th, 2019. And we're going to write a little bit of code today. We're going to write a lot of code today. Um... I uh, I got a lot of stuff done yesterday for work, so I've got a clear day. I don't have anybody bugging me today. I don't have any meetings. I've cleared off the schedule, so the only thing I have to work on are Blazor things. And guess what we're doing here on stream? We're writing Blazor things today. How's it going, chat room? Let me let me say hello to everybody who's here. Tagaron, good afternoon. Welsh Ronaldo. DD Walsh says, good morning from Bellevue, where you're celebrating Two Dozen Donut Tuesday. Say that five times fast. Two Dozen Donut Tuesday. Two Dozen Donut Tuesday. Uh, okay. PowerShell Freak, good afternoon. Maybe I'll write a little PowerShell today. Let's see. Um, good morning, Jason Vine Brackle. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks so much for dropping in. Haven't seen you since Tech Bash in the Poconos. John Calloway uh, wants a glazed donut. Job in PA, good morning, good morning, Stelzy. So, oh, Shane Boyer's here. You like the hat? You like the... Yep, brand new. Just got this. I was out Christmas shopping over the weekend. And why is it when I go Christmas shopping, I end up buying more hats for myself? I bought like three hats. I don't know. That's totally a thing. I got the Mandalorian hat there. I think it looks so cool. And with the reflection because of the lights. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, this is the way. Absolutely, we're going to do a lot of this is the way today. Better be good code. Fierce Kittens is here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Run. That's way wrong sound effect and way too loud. Um, Run because... There can be only one. And she's right there. Um, How's it going, my friend? So good to talk to you. Um, how, That is an awesome feeling. What's an awesome feeling? That it's two dozen donut Tuesday? Could be. That could be a holiday. Mason talks code. Good afternoon. Ah, we'll see about writing some power show. Stelzy says, am I looking at Mendo Fritz? Nah. Nah. I'm not going to go quite that far. I do need some more Star Wars hats. That's definitely got to be a thing. Um, Webface, hello, hello. Spend an hour looking for the sound button. Yeah, well, because uh, I'm the one and only... Jeff Fafa. Jeff Fafa. So that's why I've got now 64 keys in front of me with all of the various sound effects and things. See, Fierce Kittens, you know... Are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? Really? Are they? Come on now. Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? Actually, it's Mrs. Cowboy to you when you're talking to Fierce Kittens, okay? That's totally a thing. Wondering why your internet is extra slow today and realize there's an insider preview of Windows uh, updating. Oh, good luck to you, Smab. Squeakers09. How's it going, Squeakers? Welcome. Uh, dropping the feed to 160. Um, if this isn't the code you wanted to see here. Actually, the Mandalorian isn't the one that does that, does he? Hmm. Let me get some music playing here in the background, and I want to talk about. I want to talk more about Blazer today. I want to talk more about how we want to make this on ramp for for those legacy web form developers. And I, I can. I think I can say legacy because it's not being continued into the next version of ASP.NET. How we can help those legacy applications migrate and get into the new technologies that are available. Um, hope I had a wonderful weekend, Eternal Dev Coder. Um, I had a I had a pretty good weekend. Everything is awesome. Everything is pretty awesome. So I have a clear day. I'm I don't have a scheduled stop day, stop time. We're just gonna write code until we drop. How's that sound? I think that'll be fun. Let me get that music playing here in the background. Um, music code by and today there is no black. That'd be really cool if there was black to go with the hat and do the whole thing. Um, I'm gonna play Judson. Is what this one is called. It's a little bit more groovy than the others. This is Music to Code by from our friend, Mr. Carl Franklin. It's designed, it's scientifically engineered to get you in the flow, get you in the groove, so that whatever task it is you're working on, you can get focused and be more productive. Check it out, mtcb.pwop.com, or you can execute the music command in the chat room to get that link. Go get your copy of... Music to code by. Parkman just resubscribed for 21 months. Hiya. Hey there. Thank you so much, Pac Man Jr. And uh, you led our bits for bytes last month. The most number of, uh, of bits cheered. And uh, I, I, I am way behind on this. I need to invite some guests on the stream. We'll invite you in to, to pair program with us uh, here. All right. Let's see. So I've got the music to code by playing. Thank you so much, Carl, for letting us listen to your music while we're writing some code together. Um, let me see what else. There was something else I wanted to do first. Maybe it isn't. All right, let me get into this. Let's start in and talk about what's happening here. Talk about the project. Talk about kind of the next steps that I want to do because I think it was I think it was Stelzy or Smab. I couldn't remember who it was on Sunday said, oh my gosh, you're going to need to test these things. And we'll get into that. Let's let's talk about testing these Blazor components that we're building so that they can be efficient and uh, deliver their expected experience for folks that want to migrate their applications. This is important. We want to make sure folks have an easy path to upgrade their web applications from ASP.NET web forms. That control-based component-based user interface framework use people folks use to build web applications going back all the way to 2001 2002 coming all the way forward to blazer and build things that either run on web assembly or server side crows, for crows. just resubscribed for 16 months 16 Crying. months oh my gosh for every sub every cheer we're going to make a donation to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital wait a sec 
That's what I forgot. That's what I forgot. Hang on. Stop. Stop the music. We need to do our donation to St. Jude. Hang on. Can we do this real quick? I think we need to do this real quick. Um, good. That's over there. Let me let me bring up the number here. And uh, no, I'm not going to show that number on on all of my numbers here on screen. Hang on. We need to go take care of this. That's the number. All right. Twitch, I'd really like to copy this, please. Let me head on over to Tiltify. Tiltify.com. And I'm going to bring up, I'm going to switch screens here so that you can see that I'm getting set up for the donation. It's a thing here. Totally a thing. Because we're going to make our donation to St. Jude right now. Where, where, where's my button? I need the button. It's over here. Hey, wait, that's me. No, go away. Pause that. Um, try the new donation flow. Um, I want to make a donation. Donate. There it is. And um, I've I've mentioned I've I've talked about this. Why am I out of focus? That's better. Every every cheer, every sub that comes in every month, I make a donation, and we're donating to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. There's several different ways that we're actually making this donation. Not only am I am I paying it forward with our cheers, uh, with our subscriptions, um, but my employer makes a match, and my employer is also matching the time that I'm working here, um, broadcasting, and fundraising for St. Jude. So we're going to take care of all of that in one step here. That's the amount of money that we raised from cheers and subs this month but um i don't like i don't like numbers that aren't round thank you so much for the follow um we're going to yeah we're going to make a, a significant donation here if i can finally get my credit card too many see i haven't used this credit card enough <laughs> there it is um all right, and I, I don't like... The, uh, I'm on team round numbers, team even numbers. I don't like 76527, so we're just going to make that an even 800. Um, these are all of the cheers and subscriptions to the C Sharp Fritz channel on Twitch for the month of November. Thank you so much. Nothing else matters for that cheer. I very much appreciate that. Yes, I am going to donate with credit card. I have to key in my credit card number now. So if you don't mind, I'm going to step away for just a second here. So I can key that in. Uh, this one is something like this. And a little bit over here. With one of these buttons like that. Expiration date. Okay, and the code is one of these. Um, I have a postal code. The, where's the little donor? The little donor thing should pop up. There we go. There it is. $800 to St. Jude. It's gone through. We're at $1,900 so far in the fourth quarter here of 2019. Um, but I can also, my employer will match. Um, I will step through and, and do those uh, matching requests with my employer so that we end up with another $800 on the match and a donation for all the hours that we've worked here together on stream um, and, and raised money for St. Jude together. Um, I, I say this every time I make a donation on stream. I never ask for you. It's never a requirement for you to make a donation for you to submit a, a subscription or to cheer. Um, it flatters me. I'm happy to, to repay that by giving you emotes and giving you, uh, giving you my attention and talking with you and working with you on different projects. TBD Gamer. Thank you so much for that. 
Love this cause. And, and lost we're... several family members to cancer. As a parent, I can't imagine. Yeah. So I want to make sure that, that we continue to pay that forward on this channel. Make make donations. Help folks that that need that help. And I'm more than happy to to continue my mission here of teaching, sharing, bringing goodwill to other folks. And and I'm happy that you're here joining us and, and encouraging this positive community of techni technological learning, uh, fellowship, of course, and uh, having a good time together right so thank you so much for the cheers thank you for the subs microsoft does match not on the tiltify they go directly to saint jude so and that's okay i i don't need my employer to double my numbers here um i'm i, I would love to reach 3000 here by the end of this month um that would be a, a lot more subscriptions and a lot more cheers coming through, and that's okay. I understand. It's the holiday months. This is the first time that I'm doing this, and uh, I'm I'm happy to. Oh my gosh, Valentine! Valentine Mazieff just gifted ten subs. Thank you so much for those ten gift subs. Um, it, I'm I'm happy to pay this for it. I'm happy to help folks. Look at this. I'm I've got emotes being thrown at me. Uh, 10 gift subs. Thank you so much. We will absolutely pay that forward. You've seen we do that here. Nelson R, Squeakers09, Tam716, Lonster, Herman1975, Return to Dust, Sven bon Vandenbrund, Sushinator, Kizzy, e, and Rockle Best. Congratulations. You all just got gift subscriptions from our friend Valentin Maziev. Thank you so much. And 50 other folks in chat just got emotes. Thanks to our friends from Coca Cola and Twitch with the Ha Ha Holidays promotion. Thank you so much for that generosity. And join me in, in January. We'll, we'll pay forward that payout as well. All right. I'm, I, hey, I didn't get teary that time. Hey, kittens, I didn't get all teary that time. Uh, well, yeah. Um, I shouldn't be bragging about that. That's, I, I should be able to handle myself here. Darn it. I'm a public speaker. I shouldn't have to get all misty every time I try and make a donation to something. Um, WQ Walter says, I realize this effort is a great learning. Um, hang on. Let me let me bring up that message. Oh, God, I'm new here. <laughs> Jason Van Brackle, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's not bad getting misty. No, but there's a professionalism there that I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to maintain and it's something that I've I haven't faced before that's okay let me bring up there's a there's a comment here I want to make sure that I highlight come on uh, WQ Walter makes a very good point here but I think this effort is a great learning experience but from a business and productivity standpoint when would you consider going to a controls company and getting their upgraded controls um, they've already got them available. They, um, the folks at Dev Express, at, at Progress Telerik, um, Infragistics, Sync Fusion, they've already got them. Those are already out there. But they're commercial controls that are more complete that don't address um, and don't replace one for one the standard controls that come with ASP.NET. So if you need those advanced features, Go for it. Yes, upgrade your your subscription and go buy the Blazor controls from from those vendors appropriately. They make tremendous products. I hold nothing against them. They're doing a wonderful thing out there for our ecosystem, not just for our community, but for our ecosystem. But for our community, I think there's an opportunity here to give that that very short on ramp to show here's what controls look like that mimic the existing web forms controls so that it's easier to get over there for free community contributions open and um yeah it, right low impact of doing that upgrade um so thank you so much Jay. It, uh make sure I, I recognize jason used his twitch prime account when he subscribed just a minute ago um if you have Amazon Prime, and you probably do because you're buying holiday gifts this time of year, link it up to your Twitch account. 
you get one subscription free to use anywhere here on Twitch. If you use it here, I'll make a donation to St. Jude and you get 17 emotes and it turns off the advertisements on the channel and you get to throw emotes at my face. So thank you so much for bringing your Twitch Prime subscription here. Um, Woot for the tier free. Thank you, Svavo. So the office officially gave you the go-ahead to write an internal project in Blazor. DJ Vortex, congratulations. Welcome to the Blazor train. Coding stocks with the darn Skippy, indeed. All right, let me get into this. Um, and we crossed 9,100 before we started here today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a timer for 11 o'clock. And at 11 o'clock Eastern my time zone. Uh, we'll do a giveaway. We'll give away another sticker pack here. On the Prime thing, it doesn't work for Canadians. What? Are you, are you kidding me? It doesn't work for Canadians. Ugh. Ugh. I'm sorry. Totally rigged. I agree. Set an alarm for 11. There we go. All right. That's when we're going to do our sticker giveaway because that's about when it levels out when we hit, uh, when we start to uh, have a, a plateau in the number of folks here. Jason! Thank you so much for that $10 gift to St. Jude. Um, it, I appreciate that. And I'm not actively recruiting and pushing folks to donate to St. Jude, but thank you. Thank you so much for, for donating to St. Jude as part of our um, a part of our donation efforts here on stream. They still charge $5 or something, says Frank. Uh, um, Webface is using Prime. Okay. Hey, CLW is here. We got a bunch of the f live coders here. Frank Boucheros is here. CLW. Uh, w. I saw TBD Gamer earlier. Um... Welcome in. Great to see folks. Valentine, let me make sure I put this question up. I want to make sure this is a good good question I need to answer here. Valentine asks, um, <clears throat> is Blazor officially out? What's happening with Blazor next year? Blazor server side, so Blazor that renders on the server with the same component model, is available. It is supported. It is available for folks to use right now with .NET Core 3.0 and 3.1. Um, Blazor for WebAssembly, when it executes in the browser, on the client, right? That's going to be released in about six months. They're targeting May timeframe. Um, but you can get started with it now, and it does use the same component model. So if we build components now that work server-side, they should work client side as well when Blazor WebAssembly becomes available. Blazor is in the 3.1 long term servicing release. That's right, Frank. Yep. Uh, did it say AM? Yes. 11 AM is what time that alarm is set for. Uh, thanks for double checking on me, Panda in a tub. <laughs> um, you're using Windows 7 company provided PC poking legacy code. Says that, is that Aminus? Is that how you pronounce your name? Yep, 3-1 in LTS from Frank. And, um, yeah. So sorry to hear that. Um, .NET Core, though, does work on Windows 7. It does work on, on um, I think that's the furthest back that they go. And you'll be able to um, build and work with, with .NET Core on that operating system. I've got my Madrinas coffee. This is vanilla cappuccino I'm drinking today. So, um, there's one more server-side release in February. I don't know if they're if it's going to be February or what, but there's there there will be some more uh, patch releases you'll see um, be released. I don't know if there's a minor release coming. Um, I did update. So we have uh, we have a bunch of the voice change sound effects in as channel points now there's also now i was asked and and it was a, a very good comment from from our friend fairy wings um that a bunch of a bunch of friends on discord having encouraged me 
encouraged is that the right word to to make the various font sizes font, font types uh, available as channel channel point redemptions here on stream um, and uh, I've and, and they suggested well, why don't you give folks the ability for some extra channel points the ability to specify whatever font they would like so I did you can now redeem 15,000 channel points. It's 10,000 if you want to make me use Comic Sans or Papyrus. But you can redeem 15,000 and make me use the font of your choice. Now, there are some some restrictions on that. The font needs to needs to be something that I can install and use with Visual Studio or whatever my editor is. If it doesn't work there, we need to use a different font. So, Frank asks Yes, Frank, that's actually where I'm going to start today. You're, um, and that's... Uh, I'm kind of giving it away here a little bit. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I, will, I will show this in just a few seconds. How to publish and package for the public NuGet. We're going to look at that in just a few minutes. And I'm, I'm already showing you it's available here. Copper Beardy, my friend! Copper Beardy just resubscribed for 12 months. Thank you so much for that resub. One year, that's going to put a propeller on your sub badge, the little hat there. Thank you so much. Crows is going for the 25k. Go for it. Absolutely. I'm more than happy to do, I would I would love to do some voiceovers here on stream for folks. And I, I do still have my list of voice of uh, recordings that folks want me to do. Um, Twas the night before Christmas. Twas the night before Die Hard. I want to do The Invisible Man a couple nights this week. And I'm going to read the Elgato Stream Deck Manual. That's a thing. That's totally a thing. We'll have fun with that. Um, let me take a look over here. I want to get... Where is it? Reward request. I want to get that queue in front of me here. Nothing redeemed so far. So I'll just push that over onto that screen. Oh my gosh, nothing else matters. matters just gifted five subs. Five more subs in, into the community. Thank you, nothing else matters. We'll make that, that donation to St. Jude, just like you saw here earlier. But Astro's fan is that Atil, Atil Ihiz, uh, Shodan2000, Garahorn, and Parsnip. Congratulations, you just got subscriptions. Um, we're going to make those donations. And 25 other folks in chat just got emotes thanks to the generosity of Nothing Else Matters. Thank you so much, my friend. I've, I very much appreciate that. Showing uh, support for this community, and we're going to make donations to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. This one looks weird. That does look weird. Oh, it's a cat grabbing a cake, isn't it? That's a cat grabbing a cake is what that one is. So, all right. We're going to talk about... Smab, if you've got 42,000 points, you can turn those in, man. <laughs> um, all right. Let's let's start off talking about I've I've got the package published. It's out here on NuGet. Um, and it's it's got a tremendous number of zero downloads so far. I I need to make that more ominous. Hang on. It's got as many as zero downloads so far. Um, yeah, that's that's totally a thing. You can get, take a look, you can download a copy of the package there. What, you're saving up for one stream of mayhem. Hang on. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? And don't you go coordinating with the rest of the folks there in chat. It's it's gonna get it would be totally crazy. No, Hugo, that's a bad idea. Don't like the way he's thinking. No, don't go that way. Um, <laughs> TBD gamers at thirty k. Um, it's illegal in nine countries. It is. Can you donate to the cause? Uh, you you folks are gonna end up coordinating, aren't you? And just make my make my stream difficult one of these days. Twenty seven nine for webface. Oh my goodness. A stream of mayhem from... Oh, would, would this be a... Smap down? No! No! Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Yeah, no, we're... No. No. I bet I'll spend it all to make you use light, light mode for the whole duration. Can't do that. Can't do that. That's not a thing. 
So I've uploaded a, an initial copy here of the components that we've been working on. Those components are over here at this location. Fritz and Friends, Blazor Web Components. This is on GitHub. And let me configure the project command. Um, adding tests and more components to the Blazor Web Forms Components project at, there we go. Um, text editor would be funny. I, we can do that. We can absolutely do that. What did Hugo? Yeah, featured chat doesn't do well with Unicode and emoji. No. No, it doesn't. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So. Let's see what else. That question mark should have been sunglasses. Ha <laughs> ha. No. Um, a chat component would be great. A chat component, blazer component? Sure. Sure. I think that's a little bit further than what we're trying to build here, but it would absolutely be something cool to build here on stream. Hooking up to, um, hooking up to SignalR so folks can do that interaction. Absolutely. Um, but the, the charter for these are just those simple controls that do the interaction. Um, but we can absolutely take that as a to-do item. That would be fun to do. Um, yeah, right, I need a to-do. I don't have a to-do. I've got a lot of projects that it'd be, hey, this would be really cool to do. Chat Blazor Component. That would be fun. Yeah, there it is. It's on the to-do list. Right after the readings. <laughs> Alright. Um, so, I packaged up our components into a NuGet package. And I did that with just a .NET pack command. That's really easy to do. You drop down to the command line. You execute .NET pack. But it comes back initially and it says, Hey, you don't have all kinds of values. There's all kinds of values that you're missing inside of your your package here when you try to upload it. So if you take a look at the the csproj file here, there's a bunch of properties that you should probably set here. The package ID, the version number, who the author is, a description of what it is, blah, 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 blah. If you don't know what all these things are, inside Visual Studio, you can go to project, uh, properties, and there's actually a dialogue here that has all of the different fields. So I also That's specified it, the MIT <laughs> license. Woodrow X! Thank you so much for joining us with your Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much for that. We'll make another donation to St. Jude Children's, Ch Children's Research Hospital. Um, this must be Kirk. Kirk. Right, that's the way that uh, uh, Khan addressed him. James T. Kirk. Um, Blazor is becoming really good, yes. As a, as a component-driven, spa-like framework, it's really, really good. Shane's taking off. Take care. Tell your friends, tweet, post, etc. Great stuff. Subscribe, follow, do all the things. Thank you, Shane. Yeah, we're going to have, we'll, we'll have a little bit of fun today. We're going to be around for a while today. Uh, taking Bite Voices Acting. Hello. Welcome back in. I need to work on my voice acting thing. I need to, like, get real training and stuff. Not just me running my mouth here on stream. Um, oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. I missed it. Hey, Ma! We get some meatloaf! We want it now! The meatloaf! What are you doing? I never know what she's doing. Good morning, Mom. It's good to see you. Um, if that... Dialogue is somehow available in Visual Studio Code, the project template. No, it's not. That's a that's a really good point. There might be a NuGet extension that you can install to get some of that capability, but it's it is not there. Uh, not in the default, at least. It might be in the project tools or something like that. But um, after I filled out that other information inside of my project file here then I could upload and it now includes some of this information. You also have to fill it out on a dialog. Um, so if I sign in here, I'll sign in with my Microsoft account. Thank you. Not that one. I'm going to use a different Microsoft account. 
because I've got too many Microsoft accounts. It's like I work there or something. I don't know, right? Uh, yeah. Come on. You have no idea what you're dealing with. Yes, I do. I do. I totally do. Either a UI for Visual Studio Code or a schema to autocomplete. There is a schema that it's enforcing. I don't know if the project tools in Visual Studio Code will finish it for you, though. Um, so I'm able to, when I'm logged in here, I'm able to edit this. Um, there is no edit button on this page? I thought there was. Uh, I can go check out my, the packages that I manage up here. Publish packages. I have eight of them. There's the edit button right there. Deprecation. I can look at the listing. And I can add some custom documentation here. When you upload the package, that's when you can mark things and uh, add some additional features about the current version that you've uploaded. So this is... This is what's available right now out there for folks to be able to download and try. And it just has that list view in there that we built last time. Um, who is Jeff? You mean... Jeff the Fog. That's me. Um, yes, I do. I do work at Microsoft. There was a managed package. I didn't... S oh, there. I thought there was. Here, I'm looking for edit. It's right there. All right. Um, so I, I did an initial upload by just dragging and dropping the package, the NuGet package that I got when I ran .NET Pack. And I get this. Well, I don't want to upload that every time. I don't want to be the one person who does this upload process. So I've also put together a... Where is it? In Azure, I took my Azure pipeline and I put a version number on it. And I've hard-coded 010 at the beginning of it. I really don't like that, but it works for now. I'd really like it to be tag-driven, which means I could bring in something like Minver. But I'm finding that the connectivity of version numbers from project through Azure pipelines into a release publish is really difficult. It's tricky. We're going to do a, a sticker giveaway in just a little bit. In about 15, 20 minutes, we'll do the sticker giveaway. Dr. Scott! See? There's the Scots. Um, only Scots work at Microsoft. Nope. 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 The bot's okay. Um, so the, the management of this process of passing the version numbers through is really tricky. It's not for the faint of heart. He should know about that. See if we can do something about that. Um, today's your day for stickers, it says S1 Mo. Well, maybe. C Mo, that's it. And then, yeah, we'll do the we'll do the sticker giveaway soon. It's coming. It's coming. Um, so what I did, I have this building, and I hard coded that piece of the version number in there. But I also added a release pipeline. So the release pipeline has I, it hasn't run yet. Um, but it will oh publish my. to NuGet.org. So it's going to grab the artifacts. And this does a NuGet pack, uh, .NET pack over here. And I, I put a filter condition on here that says, uh, where'd it go? There's an artifact filter here that says, yes, when the build branch is master, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. When the build branch is master, it will do... Come on, show me the thing. No, I don't want to... I didn't want to... No. How do I do this? Go away, I don't want this one. I want to see the tasks. There, there. Um, I want to log into NuGet, and I gave it uh, credentials. And then I'm going to push the NuGet package out to NuGet.org. And I have... My NuGet server is managed over here in my services connections elsewhere in Azure DevOps. Server templating or full-fledged front-end? What do you mean this must be, Kirk? What do you mean? Help me out there. Server templating what? So it should publish now automatically to NuGet when I merge something into the master branch 
of GitHub. So here I am over here on GitHub. Let me go into settings and let me do a protect on the master branch. Branch protection rules. I'm gonna add a rule and for master, um, require status checks to pass before merging, yes. Require branches to be up to date. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that. Require linear history. Enforce also for administrators. Restrict who can push to matching branches. Uh, yes. Nobody can. Um, that's it. So, the only way to get content into that master branch is to do a pull request. Now, doing a pull request means it's going to run through our build process and hopefully pass, right? But right now, our build process, when you look at what this is, is literally, literally, uh, grab the .NET SDK, restore packages, build, we, and we don't test. So we should start doing some testing here and see if we can verify, if we can validate that this is working properly before we push things out to NuGet. Let me take a look at the chat room here. Um, this must be, Kirk says, should I template HTML and serve from a back end? Then let me, let me put this question up. There's a little bit more to it than I thought. Um, should I template HTML and serve from a back end, then dress it with JavaScript? Or should I just keep all view away from the back end and keep it like an API? How does it correlate with complexity? Good questions. The, the, the current thinking that folks take with building web applications is make the front end, the popular thinking, is make the front end as static content as possible. Now that might be JavaScript that you're serving from a static website. That's okay. And have just APIs that run on the server and you're not actually rendering or doing any thinking on the server you're for as far as building user interface yes i said javascript and horses love javascript so that's one approach the the way that folks who use php the folks who use ruby the folks who use asp.net and asp.net core do their interactions is they'll render and generate content on the server and send down straight html depends on what you're needs are. There are some folks for security purposes don't want to send down all of the user interface to the browser and they want to keep as much they want to keep things secured and on the server as much as possible. Thank you for the follow. Is that Pup USA? Welcome. Appreciate you joining us and I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> Hangover X, uh, hope you're hope you're doing well there. Um, probably needs a manual authorization. Smab suggests before we release to NuGet as well. I'm not sold on that. If the tests pass, push it, send it out there. I'm okay with that. So. The haha, this is fine. Yeah, um, I th kittens has a has a really great this is fine emote on her stream. Uh, what is it? It is. Can I, uh, we don't have tests yet. That's right. So we're gonna write some tests today. We're gonna bring those into the mix and start writing our first test, couple of tests here, just to make sure we're we're getting these simple scenarios working properly. Um, where is it? Fierce kittens has a great. This is fine emote, or maybe not. What? Why, why can't I find her emotes? There it is. Oh, it's kittens is what it is. Yeah, there it is. This is fine. So we'll, um, tests are reserved for production, says coding stocks. No, no, no. Uh, it's, uh, Papusa. Okay. Well, welcome, Papusa. Good to see you. And uh, look forward to seeing you. So, let's start writing some tests. Let's talk about what these look like and how we can make them as easy as possible to, to build and ensure they work. 
Um, until the tests cover enough of the coat, let me... Should the release pipeline be fully automatic? Well, right now, the only one, who, the only person who can push to master is me. So I'm okay with it because we've only got one component and we're going to write a couple tests for that component right now. Thank you for the follow. PS, PSBJR. P, is that PSB Junior? Welcome. Uh, you're using Go. Kirk is using Go, serving the serving is super fast. You're doing two-factor authentication. Keeping the back separate will be good. Yep. Take care. Uh, this must be Kirk. Have a good one. Th and uh, appreciate the follow. All right. So let's build what tests look like here now. Um, in the Blazor community. There it is. In the Blazor community, there is a Razor testing library. Razor component testing library from Egil here. Egil Hansen. And you can write a unit test project that will test your components. Make sure that it'll work. It's a PBJ with sam salmon and relish. All right. Well, welcome in. Let me know how you want me to pronounce your name then. Um, so, how to get started with this with this uh, unit test framework. Uh, create a Razor class library. Ensure the target framework is this version. Add the following package references. We're going to use XUnit because we like XUnit. Um, recommended packages are Mock and Shouldly. Shouldly is a fluent syntax assert library. It makes tests more readable, produce more, produce easily readable assert errors. Okay. So let's do this. Let's start getting set up with the Razor Components Testing Library. So uh, this is a Razor class library. Let me go back over to Visual Studio. Uh, open the Solution Explorer. And I'm going to add, I feel like I should add a folder because I like to keep things neat and tidy called tests. And I will add a new project. This was a, right? Uh, Razor class library, this one. And uh, do I want to put it in the source or, do, or should I create a test folder? Right. I feel like I should have a test folder that has all the test stuff in it. Nah. Um, and let's let's just call this test. It'll inherit all the um, Blazor Web Forms Components dot test. Yeah. Let me come to your question in just a second here, Squeaker. Wants me to go to .NET Core 3.1 according to this. Uh, sure. Create that project. Squeaker has a question for us. Is there any benefit to deploying a Docker image to an Azure app service over just publishing code? Good question. Um, and it, it kind of leads into the question of, the answer of depends. If you're deploying code, that means you've got to package up and, and ship that code, um, configure it, get it laid down on, on disk properly. Um, you might have some configuration you need to do that's appropriate for for your application. Versus if you deploy the Docker image, you can include and kind of codify, right? Codify all of those configuration things that you want deployed. And you can put that Docker image inside of a repository, either on the Docker Hub, set up a private repository for yourself, or set up your own Azure Container Registry and put it there as well. Your choices, but when it comes time then to issue a new copy of it, when you look at the uh, uh, reinstalling and you've deployed only source code, we now need to go find the exact version of the source code that you deployed. That might be tagged in a source code repository like GitHub, but you're going to need to find that exact version and copy it out somewhere versus that Docker image is saved in a container registry somewhere and you have it 
frozen in time almost where that repository is, where that container registry is, and you'll be able to just deploy a new copy because you have that locked down version of that container file. So it, it's your choice, whatever works for you. Copper Beardy, take care. Uh, have a good holiday, my friend. Thanks so much. Copper Beardy's another member of the Live Coders. Uh, make sure you check out his stream as well. Can I get a shout out for Copper Beardy? So um, I've added the test project. It's up here. Thank you so much, Hugo. Appreciate the shout out. The next step that we have to do is add the following package references to the testing library. Uh, Razor components testing library. Make sure to get the 1.0 version. All right, I'll do that. Uh, manage NuGet packages. Uh, browse. Give me, well, that's not it. Razor component testing library. I don't want the, there's too many things here, that's better. Um, I told me to get the 1.0, so I'm gonna get the 1.0 beta 2. Get the latest version that's listed here. Oh no, it's not compatible. I, wait a sec, hang on. I set this to not .NET standard, I set this to .NET Core 3.1. You saw that, friends, when I created this. You saw I set that, .NET Core app. That's better. I think it's lying to us. Try that again. Why does it keep thinking it's .NET standard? I don't want net standard. I set net core app 3.1. There it is. Back over here, install. There, now it's working. Um, thank you, Frank. Um, and folks, if, if you like it when I answer a question, uh, please feel free to clip so you can save that. Share those answers on social media. I'm always happy to, to promote and see see clips out there when I answer questions for folks. The ability to uh, pre-configure or codify configuration help a lot when you think about it. Yeah, it, right. And when you think about, uh, to, to finish for, for squeakers, um, when you think about deploying a Docker container, you might be deploying it to Azure today, but if you want to deploy it on-prem to to a test server or somewhere else, maybe someone else's cloud as well. Hopefully not somebody else's cloud. You should only deploy your containers to Azure um, because Azure is uh, a, a great cloud and it's the official cloud of this channel. Yeah, we like Azure here. Um, I, I get paid to say that, literally get paid to say that. Anyways, um, to be able to have that container reference out there and be able to just point back to that container repos uh, registry and pull in that container image wherever you might be is extremely beneficial to have. So, um, all right, so we added the Razor Components Testing Library. What are the other ones? Microsoft Net Test SDK. All right, we'll go get that one too. We'll get this one. Um, Microsoft.NET Test SDK. I'm going to get the latest stable on that one. Just to be safe. Okay. Uh, Xunit.core. I'm going to finish doing these installs and we'll do our sticker giveaway. Xunit.core. Can I get... I might be able to get this one. And have it bring in everything else. You know? You know what I'm saying? X unit runner Visual Studio or not. Uh, X unit dot core. Let me get that one. Um, X unit dot assert can be replaced with shouldly or another assertion library. Let's go get shouldly. If that's what they're recommending, let's get shouldly. I'm not familiar with shouldly, but I'm happy to learn it. Sure. Ooh. 
November 2018 versus the beta was June 2019. I'll get the beta then. And I think we're... Oh, we should get uh, Mach, Mach U. Let's go get that. Good morning, Flav Creations. Good to see you. Yeah, we're going to give away some stickers here in just a minute. Do, 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 do. Yes, yes, yes. Sticker giveaway. All right. Oh, my. Uh, right? Um, all right, fine. I got previews for everything else. I'll get the preview version of this. All right? Yep, good. Fantastic. And I think we're all configured now so that we can start building some tests for our uh, component library. But first, we're going to give away some stickers. Open up the Lash tools here. And get everything logged in. Fantastic. C Sharp Learner. C Sharp Learner. Did I ever get... I know I haven't issued all of the sticker packs. Oh, uh, I don't th think. Yep, yeah, there it is. Okay, I do have your address. All right. Um, uh, I need to send stickers to C Sharp Learner, and I also owe a backpack uh, to Rambling Geek. Look at this, folks are already jumping into into the uh, the giveaway here. Exclamation point here, and we'll put you in the giveaway to get a uh -huh. sticker pack, and that includes well, and then we'll do the the we'll click through to give the thing away. Is what we'll do. Uh, you're gonna get stickers like the rainbow bearded octocat, the rainbow bearded. Uh, look at the reflection. Rainbow bearded paperclip guy, Clippy. Right. I've also got, I've also got our uh, Fritz robot with shades. Oh yeah! Exclamation point here will get you in there. There you go. I've got a handful of other Microsoft stickers that involve the .NET bot, uh, the Super C Sharp logo. Um, we'll send those out to you. Oh yeah! If you want some stickers, absolutely! Exclamation point here. It'll put your name in the box over there, and we'll do that giveaway in just a minute. So, not here. Oh, smab, sorry. You're not going to get any. Too bad. So sad. Too bad. Bye-bye. Do the thing. We will. Just a minute. I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to get their name in the box. Encoding stocks with the redemption. When did that come through? Did I, how long have I, have I... Have I completely missed that? There it was. A little bit earlier there. You want me to be on Vader voice mode for the giveaway. Stand by. And Thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. I think we can do this. I think we can do this. Did it did it turn it on? No. Of course not. Here we go. Joe Pesci or Urkel? No, both are bad. No. It's all about the, the Darth Vader voice effect today. Well, for right now. Let me set the time for five minutes. As requested by Coding Stocks. You can trade in your Fritz bits, your channel points. Click the little orange gear. It's right over here, right at the bottom of the chat. Click that and you can turn in and make, you can make my coding a little bit more challenging. You can do fun things like make me change my voice or uh, request a voiceover. You can request me to record something for your stream, maybe a, a phone voice message, whatever. It's a lot of coins though to get that to happen. Um, so, do we have everybody in? We're ready to go. 
You want papyrus for 15 minutes? Oh yeah, that's a thing. Janesku, with the turn in, asking me to put on my code party hat. We'll get to that. Let me do the, the giveaway here, and we will, uh, we'll change hats. I'll finish with the, I have four more minutes of Vader mode. Ed Charbonneau. I will cut you like a fish. That's what? I can do that. That's totally a thing. Alright. It's another member of the Life Coders. AJ2017. Hello? Alright. What do you say we give away some stickers? Alright. Let's do this. <laughs> That's totally a thing. How does a fish gut someone? Hmm. I don't know. Webface, I need to click the button before you can say rigged. Dee Dee uh, tricks me like that also. Alright, here we go. The force is strong with this one. And, uh, we'll send them stickers too. It's not rigged yet. You can't be rigged into the one yet. We're going to send some stickers to anywhere in the world, and we're going to send them to... My face! Congratulations, you have won some stickers. <laughs> Congratulations. Let me set that up. go. And, uh, I will be making my way over to the, uh, to the post office. Might not be later today, probably tomorrow. And we'll, uh, we'll ship out some stuff. Uh, rigged by Darth Vader. No, it's not rigged. These aren't the stickers you're looking for. Something like that. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, Webface knew it was rigged for himself, and admitted so. Totally a thing. That's totally a thing. Ships via Death Planet? No. No. Alright. Uh, oh, cool. Alright, thank you, Webface. And, uh, here we go. Let's write... Let me go back into the instructions. There we go. Um, I added Shugley, add a reference to the Blazor project where the components I want to test are located. All right. Now I can close this. Back over here. Um, so add reference. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Alright, uh, I think that's all I need to do this test. Now there's example tests. Good, good. Test star not included, no. Our friend Imperial has Death Star emotes. They're quite compelling. Um, alright. So, it's impossible to just be lurking when I'm using this voice. That's right. Don't you forget it, Frank. <laughs> Alright, um, there we go. And we're back. Back over here. Ah, that's so much better. Hand delivered by droid. No. We don't do those things here. But what I do do... But what I do have... are a very particular set of skills. Very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Very long career. And that involves testing my sort, my, my software. Um, and I was had a request to change to... 
the uh, code party hat. Give me one second here while I go get the uh, while I go get that hat. Uh, eeny meeny miny. <sighs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> There we go. Code party hat engaged as requested by Janesco. Congratulations. Thank you. What weird voice? No weird voices. I said doo doo. No doo doo. I didn't do. No, that wasn't me. All right. Let's talk about. Well, let me get the music playing again, right? Because that was a thing. There it goes. And, um,. Let's get our first test written here. Razor test component test. Test written in Razor files using Razor code to declare or arrange the component under test and expected HTML and C-sharp code for driving. The well, that sounds easy. Let's do those. Creating a new test component. To create Razor test, we need to create test components. All test components inherit from test component base by adding at inherits test component base to the top of your dot Razor file. Okay. You need to import a few namespaces, blah, 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 blah. Okay. In the folder, you keep your razor base tests, add an underscore imports file, and put all of this above into that. That makes sense. And we define our test cases with a fixture. Okay. Well, all right. Let me start writing some of this and let's see what, what happens here. This feature is experimental. Syntax and API will likely be changed. Okay, let's see what's involved. This this looks interesting. This looks like more like the way that I would want to test this where I'm writing markup to define what the markup is that I'm expecting to have returned from my components, right? So let's do that. Uh, back over here. So I have inside of my test, um, let me get rid of this. Um, I don't need a dub dub root here, so I'm going to delete that also. Get rid of all that junk. So I have an imports file, and this was suggesting adding these to the imports file. And sure, we'll use uh, we'll use shutly, I guess. I guess, right? Um. So maybe we create an initial folder here. Nah, nah. Let's just call this list view, right? I can I can do that. I can totally do that. No. F two. List view. There we go. All right. Um, that's the syntax for actually building the list view. Let me put it over here. What I actually want it to do. Okay, um, so when you define a razor, when you have a razor test component created, right, and these all inherit from test component base, good. Uh, it's time to add some tests. This is done with the fixture component and related test methods and child components. Ah, okay. Fixture, setup, test, test. So we have a setup method, a test one method, Tests, test one, test two. I guess you can define multiple tests this way and, hmm. Did I get the items default thing sorted? No, I did not yet. Nope. I said that as kind of a, a um, an issue to address and try and figure out how do we make the default context for a control be named item? So we don't have to hard code that. We'll get back to this. We'll figure this one out. Transparent drinks. It's because it's got a green label. 
That's a thing. We got some G Fuel queued up right behind it. Oh my. Um, so where was I? Okay, so fixture, I don't know what fragments are. All the fixture components uh, defined in the test component is found in the test component basis test method. For each fixture, it calls the related methods in the following order. Setup, test, tests, one at, the, at a time in the order in which they appear in the array. It is a child component component. It is inside child component components under test where you declare the component under test. Okay. Oh, okay. That's where we actually put the markup for it. Okay. Well, all right. So let me start writing fixture. <clears throat> so I'll get rid of this, right? Um, fixture. Okay. Um, I don't think I don't think I'll have a setup method, but let's just say test equals uh, first test, just so we have something. Thank you for the follow, Norbert Stubenrein. Welcome, Norbert. Appreciate you joining us here. Um, and I see a bunch of folks. I don't know the the numbers here on Twitch didn't increment. They're about five off. Unless a bunch of folks unfollowed real quick. Eh, whatever. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see here. Okay. Saw some folks tweet me and just wanted to keep an eye on things. So first test doesn't exist. We need to create that. That'll occur in a code block. We know how to do that from our other... Uh, blazer code. I can't control period and get that to do the thing there. Um, you should be working here. I don't see... Karnak's not running properly here. Let me restart that so you can see my hotkeys as I type. There they are. All right. So let me get back into this. First test is uh, takes an eye razor test context. All right. So void first test, and it's going to take that. Okay. That's not bad. Uh, context get component under test t component, and we can get fragments. Interesting. Uh, MBB, let me come to your question in just a second. Let me copy these in so I know what this is. So, component under test. It, okay, I get that. T component. Oh, because I don't have a component under test. Okay. So, I guess... I guess... I guess... Ah, there we go. Cascading value, cascading value, theme element. Okay. Thank you for the follow, Lost Warlord 2. Welcome. Good to see you, and I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, so it still doesn't know what T component is. Well, okay. So what I want to do is I want to be able to put list view in here, and we'll have list view do some things. It still doesn't know what T component is. Where is T component coming out of? Hmm. Markup passed by child. Ex uh, expected context get fragment. Get component under test. Oh, can I specify that at like this? And now that's a list view? No. It's an I rendered component. And it doesn't know what this is. Oh, and it's generic, right? I need to give it a... Mm, let me just get rid of that, right? I can just do that. And I'm not sure what the fragment is going to give me. Is that... Is the fragment kind of what I'm expecting? Maybe? Right. So, fragment... So 
So I can say fragment with ID. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I get that. That I can... Right, so if I say fragment, and this is kind of what I'm expecting it to look like. We can do something with that. Let me come back to the chat room and answer some questions. I think I know where I'm going here. Um, because that's the ID of the fragment. Oh, yeah, okay. That makes sense. All right, I'm following this. MBB asks... Ooh, this is a good one. That I didn't put it up on the screen. If you were to redeem the 15,000 point choose my own font, does that only include fonts that are currently have installed? I would be willing... Yes. Yeah, you are correct. I would be willing to download a trusted font. Um, and we tested this last night with our friend Fairy Wings because um, I went to change fonts. And she sent me a font to try. Where'd it go? Uh, no, not display items. Fonts. And unicorns are awesome. And it was epic. That's totally a thing. Unicorns are awesome. Uh, yeah. So I'm I am willing to download and try a trusted font. Um but I, I do have right to refuse if it's uh, if it's not going to work here. If it's too ugly. If it's not something that we can really use. <sighs> Everything is awesome. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. Right. Oh, fairy wings. Nah, it's all right. Uh, let's see. Hey, Mary Jo. Good to see you. Mary Jo Stabler is a number, member of the Live Coders team. Lost Warlord asks, uh, is Java similar? Uh, where'd it go? I want to make sure I... Why isn't this scrolling? There it is. Lost Warlord asks, is Java similar to C-sharp? Yes, very similar. Um, the objects that you interact with and the, the framework but uh, is different, but the syntax, uh, the object-oriented syntax is very, very similar in concept, has some slightly different terms that you'll use in Java versus C-sharp. Very, very similar in concept. Um... A VS Code extension called PowerUp? Nah, I tried using the PowerUp extension for Visual Studio and it slows down my machine significantly. Don't want to use that. Can you pre-authorize a font before I redeem? Sure, absolutely. You can ask me to take a look. Wingdings is not supported. Wingdings and Webdings are not supported by Visual Studio. I have it installed, but it's not in the list. They won't let you use it. I don't know why. It makes me so sad. Drama Sands by C.M. Griffin. Drama Sands. The world's best fun. Oh, C.M. Griffin. Of course, I, I know him. Um, what's it look like? Show me. Well, that's kind of like Comic Sans. Adding ligatures to Comic Sans. <clears throat> Impressive. All right. Can you reliably read Wingdings? No, you can't. But it's the one that everybody asks about. It's the one everybody asks me about. There it is. Yeah, I'm good with that. Ultimate Sands. It wasn't just called Drama Sands, it was called Ultimate Sands. Well, there it is, I got it installed. 
Oh, you do want me to jump over there. All right. I will change. Thank you for the suggestion. So let me go back. Change fonts. And it said Ultimate Sans. It didn't say Drama Sans. Yeah. Oh, no. There it is. Um, now, it didn't pick it up because I just installed it. Uh, let me restart Visual Studio. When you install a font while Visual Studio is running, it doesn't always pick it up right away the first time. Of course, Visual Studio could just not open for me. How's it going there, Flav Creations? Let's see if it picks it up. There we go. All right. And I will set a timer for 15 minutes. Oh yeah. Here we go. So um, we're gonna output contents from our list view. We wanna be able to test them here. And it looks like if I'm doing this right, we wanna be able to say, should contain can we just say that the should be oh there we go find button child nodes should be some content fantastic i think we can do this um flav creations hey there of course flav creations is another uh, one of the newest members of the live coders team does the team discord have a place to show games and stuff to get input yes take a look at the collaboration channels there there's places there for you to to ask for folks to get feedback some other folks uh on the team including um uh sushi codes she's sometimes sushi day that's uh that's our friend allison day uh she got some feedback on her game bobber bop on uh through the team discord in fact if you look at the high scores on the game in uh on apple devices in the uh, uh what's the game high score thing called on iPhones like the top three or four people are all live coders <laughs> so you're welcome um, best of luck to you and, and uh, yeah the, I think you've seen the team is always very excited to help folks there's another live coder Matthew D. Groves with the raid hello there raiders welcome in how's it going It's so good to see you, Raiders. My name's Jeff, and I'm writing code. Blazer, to be specific. What were you up to over there, Matt? What was uh, happening over on your channel? Um, we're working on uh, some unit tests for Blazor components that we're writing that emulate the default controls that come with web forms. So we're going to write one or two tests here and move on to our next control that we're going to work on. Working on a Twitch bot a bit. Very cool. Um, yeah, Matt's one, another one of the live coders. And uh, there, you know, we already got the shout out for him. Um, check out his channel. He's doing, he does some really cool stuff over there. And uh, Matt, make sure you check in on the team Discord. There's some really cool stuff happening. We had, uh, we had a guest speaker last week, and we've got another one coming up in a few weeks here. Um, and we're doing some plans for some 2020 collaboration in the new year. All right, so I'm going to put my list view in here. I think I want a setup method as well. So I can... No, you know what? No, I don't need a setup method. I want to get my same widgets, widget list, into the mix here. So I'm going to add a reference here to that same shared um, sample objects library so that it's easy for us to have that same set of objects that we're going to output and we want to show information about. Um, so I'm going to add a reference. This is to, yeah, this one. So I should be able now, right? Um, I should be able to say items, right? We should be able to simplify this a bit um, and be able to say this is a... a I should put shared sample objects models put that namespace into my import statement yeah and I know 
I know we're in this. We're in this drama sans model. Uh, so I should be able to say widget dot simple widget list, right? Item type equals widget, right? Um, and if we start with the simple, right? Just say item template, right? Um, context equals item. I should be able to say uh, span um, item dot name. And I should be able to get all of those names being output. Um, so the fragment that I expect to have returned then will be span and what are all the names that I'm going to return. First widget, second widget, third widget. Right? So I should get something like that, I think. Um, so let's call this uh, the expected equals context get fragment. And I just gave it, I don't really have a name for it. Um, so maybe I say expected dot should be, does that, does that work? Um, the expected, uh, oh no, no, I have it backwards. The component under test, C-U-T, component under test, should be expected. Um, oh, a user message. Eh, let's leave it like that. Now, is that, how do I get that to test? I prefer the monospace fonts as well. Yep, new Cascadia code is really good. Uh, is that uh, I forget how to pronounce your name yep the article from Hanselman about that now how do I actually run the test you know um, uh, the X unit test runner is not able to distinguish individual fixtures from each other so they're all executed together at the same time that's okay um, but how do I, how do I run the test? Right, will it find this? Where's my test explorer? Does it find this? Build your solution. Well, it, it, hey, look at that. Hey. Two not run. Okay. What are the two? List view and imports. Well, okay. If I go up here, so list view is the one that I'm working in. Let's see, and... Component test. Uh, okay. So let's run that. I'd like to be able to give it a name. That would be cool. Those darn kids in their fancy fonts. Back in my day on the 3270, all we had was green and black, and we liked it! Something like that. So Shudley's telling me that they don't match. Some people like it, some people don't. Yep. Yeah. Uh, cut should be rendered fragment, but was rendered fragment at a different length. I don't know. How do we make that better? Um, oh, so you can do verify things are invoking properly, like button clickings, clickings and things is? When added task, I just want to verify that the HTML matches. Get changes since snapshot. Set parameter and render. Ooh. Take snapshot. Okay, that's kind of neat. I guess that lets you specify. Expected initial render. Empty to-do list render. Empty to-do list render. This one is that okay should be that well it it wasn't and it's not telling me what it is hmm. can i what do i uh what do i have on these so that i can get a little bit of information uh okay so those are all my shouldly things can i do a two string and see what it looks like what's that not telling me I don't know. What's a two string here? Right? 
Ligatures are really cool, right? So this has ligatures, so I can say something like foo, right? Whatever, right? Var foo, and I get the little uh, things pointed together there. What is this? Okay, that's fine. So you get the little arrow instead of the equals greater than. Those are called ligatures. And you can turn those on in Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, a couple other editors as well. Um, but it's telling me that that doesn't match, but it's not telling me what doesn't match. What did it output, right? Should, I mean, is it rendering them like this? What's that look like? I don't know what that's doing. Goodbye. Still no, and it's not telling me what the difference is. Hmm. It, it would be nice if it told me what the difference was. You know? What happens if I say... <clears throat> Should be an easier way of subscribing to updates for fonts. I don't know. Um, I can go either way with the fonts. I, updates to fonts feels like something that I, I don't want to be doing on too regular a basis. It's just one of those things that I kind of use. And I don't know. That I wouldn't mind having some sort of a font updating, I wouldn't mind having some sort of a updater running in the background, right? Like I've got these things for my my NVIDIA card here that'll tell me whether there's an update to drivers into my Logitech mouse. Why do I need mouse driver updates? Whatever. Um, but it feels like I can't get into and make sure that this thing is the same, you know? What happens if I get rid of all of those? Right? Does it look like that then? There were errors. Of course there were errors. What were the errors? Semicolon expected. No. <clears throat> uh, right? Should be the expected. Try that again. Chocolatey or scoop to install fonts. Oh, what's scoop? Nope, that doesn't match either. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. weird right like uh, themed button uses named cascading okay be tested with cascading values eh, whatever but I, I just want to get that Should be attribute change, set parameters, and render. Get component under test. I want to make sure that I've got three spans, right? Can I say... I can say get nodes. And then I want to... Right, can I do a... No, I can't assert. Five should be what? Oh, can I do this? Three should be the... Can I say get nodes? Uh, 
account. Can I do that? That feels like it could be a thing. Why doesn't it? Okay. Right? Why am I running Test Explorer to do this? Hang on. Uh, test. Live unit testing. Will this work? I hope it works. I love my live unit testing. Click start to discover... Yeah, okay. I'd like to. Go. Find it. Do the thing. Uh, Ed's suggesting we go... We say... Uh, cut. Get nodes. Count. Should be... That makes sense, okay. And this looks like it's still building or something here. And... That sound means I can switch back to Cascadia code. Building solution. Yeah. Built completed with failures and then we'll come back to this in just a second hang on hang on let me run the build here and see what happens build succeeded it totally worked i'm writing reverse logic sorry oh my i could try to compare the two, the two string of the two fragments but that feels like it's not exactly what i want to do it feels too much. Change fonts. Go back to Cascadia code. Thanks so much, MBB, for redeeming the font change there. That was a lot of fun for the 15 minutes that we had there. Um, so this isn't going to run my live unit test against this. Well, that's annoying. Stop. So let me do Test Explorer. Right. Uh, run settings. No. Run tests after build. Yes. Put it right here. That's not where I wanted it. I wanted it. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Should be, and it, it didn't run the tests. I told it to run after the build. Why didn't it run them? It is a trolley option, yes. For me to go to light mode for 15 minutes. Test run finished, okay. Uh, node count should be three, but was five. That returns an inode list. Is it including the space? Is it including the text? Right? Uh, node name. Right? I'd love to get... Can I, well, what happens if I do, can I do a find? Find all returns a list of elements with the rendered fragment or component under test. So what happens if I do that and say, give me find all spans? Because find all returns a collection of elements. Does that work? So if I build that, there we go. Now it's running the test. There we go. That worked. Why is it trying to run this? Container component hasn't yet rendered. This is in my imports file. I feel like I don't want the imports file to have that. That inherits. I feel like it, I feel like it gets confused over there. The ultimate troll option would be Papyrus or Comic Sans with a text editor in light mode. Yes, it would, Flav Creations. 
And we had that happen a few days ago. Change is my middle name. And I survived it. You can thank our friend Carrie Payette. She's another live coder. Did that to me. Depends on if text editor is notepad or not. Oh, it is. We did notepad. And it was spectacular. Oops. I broke that. So now we should see this pop up. Yeah, she's the coding bandit. There you go. All right. It it doesn't give me a name for the test. It just right it just says list view and when I look at the test it's component test. Right? Can I give this Yeah, I can't give this a name. Can I? Yeah, think about voice mod with those. Oh my goodness. So, okay. That looks like it outputted properly. I mean, I could do a for each through them and make sure that they're the same. But it did the four on it, so I and I've got three of them popping out, so I think I'm okay there. Let me go to source control. Let me create a branch for this. And let's put it in there. So this is uh, Blazor Web Forms Components. Let's take a look see. Uh, there's my test, base model binding component. I thought we already, I thought I already renamed that here. Uh, Denner, wow, Denner Gazavedo. Welcome. And Matt H. H. Wake. Welcome. Uh, don't talk down about yourself like that. Everybody learns, everybody grows at, at a different pace. And it's something that takes time to develop. It's Learning is, is a, and the brain is a muscle, just like anything else. And you need to take time, you need to train it, and you will get better. Um... Let me just double check here. Make sure I have... Yeah. All right. So let's um, call this uh, feature unit unit test because tests are a feature. Uh, no. Name the branch. Thank you. Add all the things. Um, first simple test added. There we go. And I will push this out now so I have a copy out on my GitHub repository. There we go. Fantastic. So, um, now I can write a couple more tests here to make it easier for us to verify that all the features work. At this point, I'm just verifying that it's doing the for each loop inside here. So I could verify that it's also doing alternating item template as well. Um, which I would, I feel like I would want to do because it's completely separate output that I'm getting. I feel like I would want to do that as a separate component. Um, let's do that. So I'm going to shake things up here just a little bit. Create a folder called list view. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. You're moving. Do it. Let's call this, um, let's call this simple list. Right, because it's just, we're just verifying it's got the three spans that we have there. I'm gonna copy this, and let's call this uh, alternating template. We're gonna verify the alternating template works. So what I'll do is I'll add alternating item template, and for this one, instead of a span, let's make it a bold, right? Just so it's something different, okay? So we still have three items uh, coming out. 
See, and actually, I don't feel like I need the fragment then if I'm not a testing against it and saying, hey, this is what it should look like. Um, I feel like I can get rid of from over here. I don't need the fragment because I'm not using it, which means I don't need that. Right? If I say I don't need this, right? I should say find all span. I should have uh, two of those because that's the first one. Right? Um, did not render two span elements. And the other one is a bold, right? Uh, did not render one B element. Forgot the quote. There we go. So now if I build that and we take a look at Test Explorer, this should... Well, it should reload and we should get the new things here. There we go. And they both work. Cool. Right? And if I if I had flip-flop these, maybe this was an I, right? That should come out and say that it was the incorrect number. And these are the simple tests. We haven't gotten into any button pushing or anything like that yet. Right. I've appropriately got an error here. Should be, but was zero. Did not render two span elements. Right, because I changed it to an I. So. Cool. Alright, so I know my alternating item template works. Um, I could also test that the select method works and that it's properly using that. That could be a thing. We can we can build that quickly, I think. And then move on to... Oh, I did an end then. And then... Move on and do... Let's do the repeater control next. Let's build that one. Commit in our unit tests that say, hey, this does work. And go over and start working on the okay. repeater. Right? Um, all right. So uh, let's start with a simple list. I'll repaste that. And we'll call this uh, select method. There we go. Um, so we do have an item... Do we have to define the item type? Maybe. Call is ambiguous. Um, you should be okay there now, fella. There we go. Uh, list view items. Well, if I don't have items and I have a select method... Right? So it's a select handler. So this is going to... What does the select handler look like? It's not going to let me generate that, is it? Um, get widgets. Can I control dot and generate? Nope. If I F12... Oh, it won't let me F12 into it. Hmm. Um, in here, we had to find select method, which is a select handler, which returns an I queryable and takes in those parameters. Right? I queryable of type widget and I called it get widgets. Come on. Yeah, I know I didn't specify it yet. Okay. Um, so I can say, what was it over there? Total row count. 
total road count equals um, simple widget list dot count. Actually, I could say length because it's an array. Um, and I can return uh, widget simple widget list dot. Uh, as query that should satisfy that satisfies that so now I should get still get my three entries coming out because it's go now going through using the select method instead alternating temp there it is select method there it is it worked Fantastic. So it did use the select method. It did go through this and populate that. Thank you for the follow. Is that th is that Thepi? Welcome. Thepi? Thanks so much for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. So I've got a couple of simple tests to make sure that these things work. I'm okay with that. 1 a.m. in Malaysia. Welcome in, Odin Hassan. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, I'm pretty happy with how easy it is to build these controls here, build these components and tests. So let me uh, commit these changes. Um, added tests, uh, organized tests, organized and added tests for list view. Fantastic. And I'll, uh, you make me sad. Doesn't matter. Because I'm about to delete this. And now I have tests. Let's get them into, let me get them into the pipeline. So here where I had tests, I'm looking for something called tests CS proj for it to go and build and test. I called my test project test yeah I'd, I'd like to go there can I go there uh, it was under variables no The pipeline parameter. Yeah, where's the parameter? Pipeline. Uh, get rid of the S. There it is. Oh my. Yeah, see that? Yeah, I know. Thank you. I think we've got this. Um, I don't want to save it just yet. Let me come back over here. Test. We're going to test. Configuration. Build. Uh, publish test results. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I think that's what I want. Let me enable this. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to save and queue this using my new unit test branch. <clears throat> Activated unit tests. Let's see what it does. Come on, here we go. Get this running, see what it looks like. Initializing the job, checking out, good. Good, good, do the thing, here we go. I'm hoping, hoping. Come on, restore those packages. There shouldn't be that many pack. Oh, wait a sec. Is it going to restore? Let's see what happens when it runs that test. It should build it first before it runs the test. Should. We'll see what happens. We shall see. We shall see. 
Uh, okay, build. So it's building my web forms component CS proj. So it's trying to run test the te run .NET test against my test project. I'm hoping it restores and builds first, which it should do. Um, wow, that was fast. It, it, it did the whole shebang there in 13 seconds. Cool. And it did the NuGet pack. Here you can see it packed um, Blazor Web Forms components. Now here's the thing. When it does the pack command, it rebuilds it again. And it restores again. But it, it, it just did that. See, look, build. So... I feel like I need to change that over. It, it built properly, right? And that's the thing that we can look at here is tests, 100% passed. Good. And I can look at the test block now and I've got three tests and they all pass. If I edit, I want to edit the pipeline here and I want to go into the pack command here and say, yeah, do not build. You already built once here. You don't need to go building again, friend. We are we already done that once. Um, so we can uh, skip that and make sure that this runs a little bit faster. Uh, turned off the build operation when packing the NuGet package. That feels weird. When making, right? I know pack is the term for it, but... Hey, Quality Coder! Hello, hello. Quality Coder is another member of the Live Coders team. Am I using the preview UI? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I didn't specifically turn it on. This is the user interface I got when I went to Azure DevOps. Um, okay. So, those tests work. I feel confident that they work properly. Let me merge that into my, there we go, into my master branch, and we'll start working on the repeater control. So, um, okay, so pull requests, we're gonna go new pull request. We're gonna bring in the unit tests, and we're gonna push them over here. Yep. So, now we'll have that validation that yes, it did build, it does work properly. I'm not gonna squash and merge. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, sure, squash and merge. That's fine, do it. Um, uh, let's just say, add a test for list view. Okay, boom. And if we go back over to Azure DevOps and we look at the pipelines, this is gonna rebuild now. And it's 0 0.10 pre, blah, 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 blah. But what I expect to happen, what I hope to see happen is this triggers in deploys all the way out to Robert NuGet. Tables just resubscribed for 13 months, over a year. Oh Robert my gosh. 68 HECC. Thank you so much, my friend. It is, it's great to see you over a year, 13 months with Robert Tables. Thank you so much for, for uh, uh, hanging with me for, for that time. I really appreciate it. Robert Tables is another member of the Live Coders. Um, he's doing some tremendous work over there on his channel. All kinds of, whether it's hardware, software development, containers, doing some operations talk. You gotta check out the channel and what's going on over there on Robert Tables channel. Um, I love the power on uh, emote there, quality coder. That's really cool. Uh, did I know there is now a topic for channel points? Yes, there is now a pub sub for channel points. But you can't modify them yet. You kind of have to... You kind of have to wait for them. Um, here we go. Why did that one say failure? One commit, here it is, it's running. Looks like it ran properly all the way through. Are we gonna get the release? Is it gonna publish this thing? Should, 
should. Thank you for the follow. Uh, appreciate that. Talk to me, Gooseman is here as well. Greetings, my excellent friend. Yeah, Gooseman's another one of the live coders. So great to see you. Um, where can you find the dark setting in Azure DevOps? I believe. Haha, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Good call, Webface. Oh my gosh. Um, that was a great idea. So glad we put that in. Because, uh... It can be done exactly how I want it. The only question is, are you the man to do it? Of course I'm the man to do it. Darn Skippy, we're gonna get it done the way I want it to. Um, live coders meet up right here. Well, yeah. We did one last week with, with we had about 30 members of the team in a, in a chat room with Scott Hanselman last week uh, on Discord, and it was tremendous. We had so much fun. And uh, friends, I, I will tell you that um, Scott's looking at republishing the recording of our discussion with him, that all the life coders, and you know some of these folks, including Robert Tables, Callow Creation, we're talking to Scott, learning about different ways that we can grow our communities and be a, a positive influence on our communities. And uh, he's going to publish that as one of the Hansel Minutes uh, episodes of his podcast. Yeah, Flav Creations. It was a lot of fun to listen to. And Gooseman got, got to uh, have a discussion with Scott as well. Yeah, yeah. So um, why, didn't it, why didn't it create the release? Create the release. Do it. Publish the NuGet. Stages for a trigger change. Yes, do that. Yes, use this one. Go. Thank you for the follow, Aaron Agency, Ar Arana Agency. Welcome, Scott was a great guest, and uh, we're lining up a couple more guests to talk to the live coders. Um, I'm going to bring in somebody to talk a little bit about inclusion and and making sure that 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 ladies are well represented in the technical community. Um, I want to make sure that we bring in some folks to to talk about what it means to to be broadcasting for a long time out here on these platforms. Um, and we'll see who else, it, other folks, want to bring in and have a talk for the team that helps to um, grow and, and improve the group here. Not deploy. Why not? What do you mean not yet started? Go! Do it! I shouldn't have to click all these things. It should just be doing it. Right? Have a good one, DJ Vortex. Good to see you. I have a feeling I don't have this set up to be triggered properly. You know? There it goes. Right, like I want my release, my, my software release to happen here immediately. <clears throat> Look at this. Uh, service connection, the API key service connections are not supported in this task. Use dash API key or dash dash API key when invoking the tool yourself. Fine. Thank you for the follow, Freemauer. Welcome. Look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Folks helping us get to our next sticker giveaway here. We'll get that set up. So let me um, let me fix this. It looks like I need that dash dash API key in the mix here. Hey. To get that to work. So I will edit this. Uh, edit the pipeline. Right, I don't think uh, not a schedule. One trigger. Ah, there we go. Um, enabled. Ah, branch filter. There we go. Yes, branch filter. When it is master. That's the one I want. Okay, so that should kick off. The pre-deployment condition. I don't need... Yeah, I need the artifact filter. Good. Um... And the task that it's running, the authenticate here. Um, going to NuGet. Wait a sec. No? Mm hmm. Um, that's funny. All right. Can I do it over here? Command push. Hmm. Control options, no. 
Uh, what is this? No, this is dark mode, Janesco. Um, hmm. That's peculiar. It was in the authenticate. I don't have output variables. Right, it's like I, I feel like I need to run this in command line mode based on. Let me save this to start here. Right, based on what happened. Let, let's look at the error here. The service connection for NuGet Authenticate is not valid. API key service connections are not supported for this task. Okay, so. I guess I just jump right into NuGet push and pass the API key that way? Let's give that a try. Uh, edit. Sure, I'll edit this release. You can edit approvals, tasks, and variables. Yeah. Wait a sec. Edit the release pipeline. Okay, I guess I want to be over here then. Mm -hmm. The tasks. So do I, I get rid of this one? I guess I get rid of this one. So all I do is NuGet push. And I guess it formats everything properly for me? I hope. I don't know. Let's try it again. We're going to do this. We're going to grab that one. Go. Manually triggered, so this should run. Right? Why do I have to click deploy? Do it! To be deployed. Yes, do it! Shouldn't have to click all the buttons. <laughs> Developing. Talented, you're not wrong. Guess what tab drop down you need is in. It's kind of like an adult version of hide and seek. You're not wrong. You're not wrong there at all. Uh, let's see, what do we get here? Download artifact, new get push. Here we go, here we go, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. One warning. Uh oh, what's the warning? No packages match the search pattern. What? What do you mean no packages match the search pattern? So it didn't actually push anything. That should be a fail that it didn't actually do anything. Let's edit the pipeline, take another look-see. Um, this... After release... I don't want any gates. No, just do it. Okay, so the one task is this, something star dot nupkeg. Now why didn't it find it? Right? Star dot nupkeg, there it is. Right? I should be able to do like that. Because I don't want to specify the version number. Get it to figure out what that is. Try it again. Yes, go now. Release. Release 3 has been created. Great, do it. It's like, right, manually triggered. Great. Now what? Yeah, where's Waldo? I don't know. Q information. Come on, go. Initializing the job, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Downloading the build artifacts. Yep, should come right over. Oh. Oh. Shame! 
Shame. I, what did I do? Um, uh, one or more error. System net HTTP response status code does not package with the ID and version already exists and cannot be modified. Well, that's not bad. That's actually that's that's actually right. That's okay, because the version number that popped out was zero one zero. Well, that was the version number that was written into the file name. We want that dash pre information to pop out there also. So while it failed, that's right. That's what it should have done. Let me go back over to the build pipeline. See, right, the version number that it wrote, 010-pre, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, thank You're making me feel bad here. Um, let me edit this. When it does the pack, is there an argument I need to pass in there to make sure that it includes the... Um, the version number, not just the build number, right? Um, because that, that full build number, it's not including, it, it's like chopping. Um, no, I don't want the history of this. I want to see the times that it's run. I want to look at the log of this one, this one. So I can take a look at. Uh, oh no. Right, so it wrote. The file number it wrote isn't correct. It ran. Right, uh, here, when it did the pack. See, package version 010. You know what? It's getting that out of the CS Proj. Because that's hard coded into the CS project file. Uh, you're not wrong. 60% of the time, it works every time. Yeah, it doesn't quite work all the way. Um. How do I get that version number then forced into into my pack command? Right? So edit pipeline. And this I feel like is is almost like a documentation thing. Right? Package folder, include symbols, include source. This cannot be used with include reference projects if you see but this is being overwritten this is being overwritten by the version number it feels like that's inside of there when it did that .NET pack right where did it get the 010 Odin Hassan says, "Check the artifact." Um, now, the artifact that it, that it generated—it's a fair question. Um, if I go back over here and look at the artifact from this one, right? So there, it's this—it's this one nupkeg. Uh, if I save it. Ah, oh, come on. Yes. So all NuGet packages are actually zip files. Oh my. Right? So if I open the new spec here, and uh, I want to open that with Notepad. See, version 010, that came out of my CS Proj file. So, this is where I'm, I'm fighting the version management of this. Yeah, that version number flowed into the name of the NuGet package. 
but it doesn't match the name of the build number in Azure DevOps. The, this continuity between my project file, my uh, continuous integration process, and finally into my published artifacts, a, a NuGet package, doesn't quite work. It's, it's something that that should be a heck of a lot simpler to do here. And, um, right. I can push the new branch with a dash pre on it. You're right, Smab. I do need to pick a versioning flow and stick with it, but how do I get a versioning flow? Right? This should be something that is trivial. Just pick this up and here it is, and everything from my .NET project just flows from it. And it doesn't. Right? Um, so, I struggle with that. I tried to use Minver, and Minver actually struggles when you have things building inside of a uh, inside of a Docker container. Git version. I don't know what that is, Steve Wash. Let me see. Uh, Odin Hassan has publishing. So yeah, there's new Git push which is what I'm doing in that release. Um, and you pull the, it's pulling the version number. Right, it's not letting me specify the version number here as part of this. So, git version, Steve has a link for us to git version. What's git version give us? Easy semantic versioning for projects using Git. Uh, okay. What do I do? Git version in action. Okay, so there's a tag for 1.0. A branch called release 1.0 producing beta v1. I don't see a branch called release 1.0. I'm... Okay, how do I use this? Uh... Give me a quick start. Give me something here. Uh... And Azure DevOps is not in the list here. What is TFA, TFS build? Azure DevOps Pipeline Setup. In Azure DevOps Pipeline, you can call Git version either using the command line build step or an install and extension. Add the Git version task. See the MS build task for... Uh, okay. Um, using the custom Git version build step. Whoa. Add a, command, uh, add a command line build step to your build definition. You probably want to drag the task to be at or near the top to ensure it executes before your other build steps. Okay. Set the tool parameter to path to git version, git version exe. Set the arguments parameter to output build server no fetch. Uh, okay. If you want the git version task to update assembly info files, add update assembly info true to the arguments parameter. Yes. Um, but I'd prefer this as a build step. Using pipelines YAML. Um, okay, so w how do I install this so I get it running both locally Select pack options and select one of the values for automatic package versioning. I did that, and it didn't assign that version to my NuGet package. 
Smap says my version flow always has the main part of the version coming from the CS proj with build specifics at the end. Yes. Git tools, git version. Versioning when using git solved. Looks at your git history, works out the semantic version of the commit being built. And it feels like the documentation disappeared here. Calculated version numbers can then be accessed through variables such as git version new git version and git version dot semver. It's also very configurable to allow it to work with most release workflows. Okay. This is an Azure pipeline. Here. Uh, all right. Let me try adding this locally. Right, we want uh, global tools install. It's actually on, if it's on NuGet, there should be an install instruction here that we can grab. .NET add package, I'm gonna do the tools install. And I forget how to do that. Right, if I want command line Troco install brew install no come on now Git version dot tool. There. That's what I want. And if I don't specify global, so we can get it installed locally here. Cannot find manif um new to me I was not familiar with this oh .NET tools JSON really I'm not familiar with that So now if I install that. Okay. Um, so now I have it available as a command line here. Now what? By default, git version returns JSON object. All right, so hang on. I need to... Okay. 
Uh, update assembly info. Mm, inject version metadata into the assembly. So we're going to need to set up an assembly info for our project so we can put the version number in there. Or not. Git version update assembly info ensure assembly info. Hang on. I'm already lost. How do I start the version numbers flowing? There are a number of sources Git version can get its version from. Semantic version does not increment every commit. If you're using Gitvo to Git flow to then builds off the develop branch will actually increment on every commit. Well, I call it dev, not develop, and I'm not doing that. Um, committing messages add plus semver breaking or semver major. Okay, so. Hmm. We're good. Um. All right. So what happens if I run Git version right now? Nothing. Feature versioning point one. Hey, listen. Uh, we'll just dot net git version, right? So now what do I have? Uh, did it put it in the dot config file? Nope. So where did it write it? I mean, it didn't add anything actually. It just, yeah. Right, if I feature versioning, there's my shot. Okay. Uh, I don't like the naming that it's coming up with here. Feature dash versioning. Okay, that's the name of my branch. Point one. Okay, so it's the first commit on it. Okay. I, I don't like those because it's not a complete word. It cut it off. Um, and I'm... Okay, now what? Uh, I've run this command um, and you know what? I'm a half an hour into trying to figure this out and I haven't gotten anywhere. And I've been counterproductive. Um... Somebody give me a pull request that sets this up. I'm not going to fight this anymore. Um, it's... I, I've run into this problem before where I go down a rat hole on something and I, I get lost in documentation and it's, it's not clear to me exactly how to get started with this. Um... And, and I end up chasing things um, when I could have been productive and instead I've chased an open source project now for the last half hour um, uh, yes okay um, I'm moving on So I have unit tests now available. And then? 
I wanted to get to the repeater control. Um, yeah, the, the task in the pipeline should be easy to use and I need to plug in those version numbers throughout my project and into my NuGet package and nobody has a really good easy way for me to just drop something in point it at this and it's done and it just works um i i've i spent a half an hour squirreling on this and and i got nowhere um you know what i really want to grab some lunch Let me do this. I'm going to end the stream for now, and I'm going to come back a little bit later and uh, get back into this and work on the repeater control. So let me... Uh, I've got everything checked in. I'm all ready to go here, actually. There's nothing to, to really clean up here. Um, I'm happy that it's building. I'm, I wish I had the release running properly because it's not pushing out to here the way that I want it to, and I have to get that version number lined up. And I'm okay with setting the version number myself in my project file, but I'm going to end up having to chase that a little bit. That's okay. We'll we'll figure that out. Let me see who's streaming out here on Twitch that we can uh, take a look at and send some folks into on a raid. Taking a quick look-see... Oh, you know what? This looks like our friend. Let's try something new today. I'm going to put out the raid call. If you're if you're a subscriber, grab the first line right here. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Grab the second line. And we are <clears throat> we are going to raid Amazon Alexa. And it looks like our friend Jeff Blankenberg is hosting a session there where they're building some Alexa skills right now. Um, thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And I'll be back probably a little bit later today. If not, I'll be back definitely tomorrow. But we're going to go through and we're, we're going to start building our repeater component. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. I appreciate you tuning in. This video, like all my other videos, and I've got them all queued up on YouTube, will be released and will be available for folks to be able to watch and catch up with later. Thanks so much, friends. Get ready to say hi to the folks at Amazon Alexa. I'll see you next time.